Romans chapter 13 to 16. Chapter 13. The Higher Powers. Romans 13 verses 1 to 2. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Be subject unto the higher powers, Paul makes these statements while Nero is emperor in Rome who ruled as an absolute tyrant. For those in Rome, this would be a much harder teaching to accept than for those who were just under Roman law, which was just about everyone at this time. Believers everywhere then, and now, need to be in subjection to the higher powers because they are ordained of God. If they are evil, and you live in a democratic state, then you should use your influence to remove them. Nero was ordained of God to be emperor at the time Paul wrote this epistle for reasons known only to God. Sometimes rulers are placed in power as a reward for their citizens' righteousness, and at other times a tyrant may be placed in power to chastise them. They that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Paul did not mean eternal damnation or else he would have said that, like in Mark 3 verse 29 and other places. The word damnation is translated as such from a Greek word krimia, where we get the word crime from. Paul was referring to their condemnation legally speaking and in the eyes of all who recognize the authority placed in the hands of the government by God. I can be condemned of a crime, but not condemned to death or condemned to hell. The context determines the definition. To be condemned literally means to be found guilty. The punishment must fit the crime. A jail sentence for resisting the government is far different from eternal damnation in hell. There are times when we are to resist the government as believers and there should also be a proper amount of resistance as we are guided by the scriptures. Romans 13 verses 3 to 5 for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. He is a minister of God, to resist our God-appointed leaders just because they are predominantly heathens is to resist God himself, because he has appointed them, and he has ordained government to prevent anarchy or lawlessness. A revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil, God does not ordain governments to do evil, but to punish evil. The problem is not government, but evil men is government. Resistance isn't always wrong, in fact there are times in the scriptures where we see that we are to resist. In areas of our faith, we are commanded to obey God rather than man. A good example is when the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel were commanded by its national leaders, the powers that be, to quit preaching in Jesus' name. They that resist the powers will be punished by those in power even to the point of them bearing the sword against them. God does not condone anarchy. Romans 13 verses 6 to 7 For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Pay ye tribute, we are to pay our taxes, tribute, for the support of these higher powers who in turn are to be a terror for us unto evil works and a rewarder of them that do good. We are to render dues to whom dues are deserved, and not unto whom they are not. We are not required to be walked on or over by them, and we are to only pay what is legal for us to pay. Every believer should claim every deduction they are entitled to, and then use that for God's work and the well-being our families. Romans 13 verse 8 Owe no man anything, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Leviticus 19 verse 18 Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. He that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Nowhere in Paul's epistles are we commanded to keep the law to receive eternal life. 
Loving someone, however, is the perfect definition of what grace is all about. Romans 13 verse 9 for this, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Exodus 20 verses 13 to 17 Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Leviticus 19 verse 18 Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. Romans 13 verses 10 to 12 Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now, is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. We are saved from the wages of sin, which is death, and separation from God for eternity. We are delivered from that terrible fate that all unbelievers still face. Romans 6 verse 23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The works of darkness, Ephesians 5 verses 3 to 4, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. The armor of light, Ephesians 5 verses 8 to 14, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth winky face. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Romans 13 verse 13 Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in riding and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Chambering, defiling oneself sexually, to be a whoremonger. Hebrews 13 verse 4 Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Wantonness, filthy conversation, lasciviousness. 2 Peter 2 verse 7 And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Jude 1 verse 4 For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 13 verse 14 But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. We are already in Christ positionally, but we must put on the Lord Jesus Christ daily before we go out and do battle against the works of darkness. Galatians 3 verse 27 For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Make not provision for the flesh, placing ourselves in situations where we are likely to give in to temptation that is how we make provision for the flesh. Romans 7 verse 18 For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Galatians 4 verse 14 And my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Philippians 1 verse 22 But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I would not. Chapter 14 Weak in the Faith Romans 14 verses 1 to 3 Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another, 
who is weak, eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Him that is weak in the faith, a new believer who has not been instructed much in the faith delivered to us today. Another, who is weak, eateth herbs, a vegetarian who is weak in the faith. Paul instructs us to receive someone who is weak, new or misguided, in the faith, but not to doubtful disputations. We are not to fight with them or to separate from them because they do not have the light that we have. These are not issues of major doctrinal concern that Paul is dealing with here, but issues of the individual's conscience. If God has received him as a brother, we are to receive him. Do not make the requirement for fellowship with you that all people have to become clones of you. What a boring world that would be. Romans 14 verse 4 Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yeah, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. God is the master of that man, not you. To judge someone who is not your responsibility to judge is to bring him down, falleth. He shall be holden up, held up or held accountable. Romans 14 verses 5 to 6 One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. One man esteemeth one day above another, this is in regards to holy days and Sabbaths. Notice that Paul is not giving us a doctrinal argument for worshiping on the Sabbath day versus the Lord's day here. He is just giving us a principle that will work in any area where God's word is silent. Remember the Sabbath day was given to Israel and not to the church. Under the law, if a person did not keep the Sabbath, they were to be stoned to death. Prior to the cross, mankind was given six days to labor with the final day of the week as a day of rest, which pictured the rest that would come ultimately in the Messiah. Now that he has come, we that are saved have received our rest. So we look back to the Lord's day, Sunday, when he rose from the dead, and we assemble together on that day to commemorate it. Those that teach that we have to keep the Sabbath day do so because they believe they think they are spiritual Jews and that they have replaced Israel. They place themselves under laws that were not intended for Gentiles to keep in the age of grace. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Don't go along with your camp just because that is how you were brought up. Find out if something is right or not for today. You can be biblical in following something today, like keeping the Sabbath, because it is found in the Bible, but you would be dispensationally incorrect for today. You are not Israel under the law, you are the body of Christ under grace. Romans 6 verses 14 to 15. Romans 14 verses 7 to 9. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord, whether we live therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died, and rose, and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. None of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself, we as individuals are not an island to ourselves. Just because your camp or family does some religious thing today, it does not mean that God is still doing that today. For example, God does not want you to build an ark today to save your family. He is not putting the body of Christ under the law because Israel was once under the law. We are under grace today. Romans 6 verses 14 to 15. Romans 14 verses 10 to 11. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Isaiah 45 verse 23 I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. 
set it not to disregard something or someone. Proverbs 1 verse 25, But ye have set it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Paul includes himself, along with his audience, in this future judgment that awaits all believers in the body of Christ. Romans 14 verses 12 to 13, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. A stumbling block, when we judge someone in an area of a preference, we place a spiritual stumbling block in front of our brother causing him to fall, and we will give an account for those actions at the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14 verses 14 to 21 I know, and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus, that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat destroying not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. There is nothing unclean of itself. Paul was persuaded of this truth by Jesus Christ himself. You may be persuaded by your camp's teachings that you can't do something that God allows because they are not fully persuaded from the word of God, but by their own crowd. Don't destroy what Christ is trying to build in your family and in your church with issues of preference. Try to persuade them to what is right and don't use peer pressure to get them to conform to what you are doing. Romans 14 verses 22 to 23 Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. He that doubteth is damned if he eat. Some people make themselves miserable by judging people in areas of a Bible teaching when they don't really know what the whole counsel of God's word has to say about a subject. There are things that we are to judge such as sin and doctrinal error, but this chapter has a lot to do with preferences that really don't matter one way or the other. If you think something is sin, even when it is not, and you willingly participate in it, then God says that you have sinned, not against him, but against your conscience. Chapter 15 A Minister of the Circumcision Romans 15 verse 1 We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. We then that are strong, someone who is strong is not easily offended, who doesn't attack another immediately when they see something different about them, instead they bear with them in spite of disagreeing with them inwardly. Infirmities, sins, physical illnesses, or weakness in spiritual things. Christ was the perfect example of bearing others' infirmities when he took our sins upon himself and died in our place. We are to emulate his example and die to ourselves to serve others. Romans 15 verses 2 to 3 Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but, as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Psalm 69 verse 9 For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Romans 15 verse 4 For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. The word for links this verse to the second half of verse 3 above, which is a quote from Psalm 69 verse 9. Through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, the scriptures echo or give us the hope of our future with Christ. It is a certainty if we have trusted the gospel alone for our salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 
Romans 15 verses 5 to 6 Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be like-minded one toward another, just as those in the upper room were in one accord, so we in the body of Christ should be in our service to God. Acts 2 verse 1 And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Romans 15 verse 7 Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Receive ye one another, as Christ also received us. Christ received Paul as Saul of Tarsus, the chief persecutor of the church of God, and he forgave him. A minister of the circumcision. Romans 15 verse 8 Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. This is a reference to the Jews who were all circumcised since the days after God called Abram out of the U.R. of the Chaldees. He was not sent to none but unto the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Matthew 10 verses 5 to 7 and 15 24. To confirm the promises that were made unto the fathers, Jesus came to the circumcision to confirm the Old Testament promises made to Israel's ancestors, mainly Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and King David. The main promise was the kingdom which was being preached by Christ and the twelve as being at hand. Matthew 4 verse 17 Romans 15 verse 9 And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. Psalm 18 verse 49 Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. That the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, this was mainly speaking about Gentiles and the kingdom, as the church, which is Christ's body, was not spoken of in the Old Testament. It was hid in God. Ephesians 3 verse 9 And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Romans 15 verse 10 And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. Deuteronomy 32 verse 43 Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land, and to his people. Romans 15 verse 11 And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. Psalm 17 verse 1 A prayer of David. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, Give ear unto my prayer, that goeth not out of feigned lips. Romans 15 verse 12 And again, Esaias saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Isaiah 11 verse 1 And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. When these promises were made to the fathers, they all understood them in light of the thousand-year reign of Messiah in the kingdom on earth. They did not see the church age for it was still a hidden mystery kept secret in God until it was revealed to Paul. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26. Romans 15 verses 13 to 16. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. The grace that is given to me of God, Romans 12 verses 3 and 6 for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 4 I thank my God always on your behalf, for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. 
1 Corinthians 3 verse 10 According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Galatians 2 verse 9 And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Ephesians 3 colon 2, 7 to 8 If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord, whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 7 But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 Who hath saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Paul doesn't minister to us Gentiles the things promised unto the fathers, Jewish ancestors, as Jesus Christ did to the circumcision in verse 8. He is not a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, but the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. He is the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13. Jesus Christ was a minister to the circumcision, as were the twelve apostles. Galatians 2 verses 1 to 9 Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, or had run, in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seemed to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it mocketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person for they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me, but contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Paul alone is the apostle of the Gentiles. Ministering the gospel of God, this was different from the promises to the fathers that Jesus confirmed to the circumcision. The promises to the fathers are all a part of the prophecy program while the gospel of the grace of God that Paul preached is a part of the mystery program that had been kept secret from before the foundations of the earth. Acts 20 verse 24 But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable unto God. See the mystery among the Gentiles in Colossians 1 verses 20 to 29. Colossians 1 verses 20 to 29 and, having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I Paul am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that 
which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Romans 15 verses 17 to 19 I have therefore whereof I made glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient, by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem, and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. To make the Gentiles obedient, Romans 1 verse 5, by whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations, for his name, Romans 16 verse 26, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. From Jerusalem, and round about unto Illyricum, Paul preached everywhere in between Jerusalem and Illyricum, which was just to the north of Greece on the Adriatic coast. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. This is the same gospel as mentioned in verse 16 as the gospel of God. Notice that Paul emphasizes that he fully preached the gospel of Christ, even in Jerusalem. He did not preach the gospel of the kingdom to them as some teach. Romans 15 verses 20 to 21 Yeah, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation, but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. Isaiah 52 verse 15 So shall he sprinkle many nations, the kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Lest I should build upon another man's foundation, Paul was not laying the gospel of the grace of God over top of the gospel of the kingdom that the twelve preached to Israel, he was laying the foundation Christ gave to him as the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 Romans 15 verses 22 to 24 For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. But now having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire these many years to come unto you, whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way thitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. My journey into Spain, Christ was not named by many in Spain, so Paul planned to go there and stop along the way in Rome where many churches had been established. See Romans 16 for a list of all the churches that existed there in people's homes. Romans 15 verses 25 to 27 But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. A certain contribution, 1 Corinthians 16 verses 1 to 4 now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. 2 Corinthians 8 verses 1 to 15 Moreover, brethren, we do to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power, I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God. 
insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in every thing, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased, and ye burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality, as it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. The Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, the Jewish Savior. Salvation is a spiritual thing. Prior to the dispensation of grace given unto Paul, salvation was of the Jews. John 4 verse 22 Ye worship ye know not what, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. This is speaking of helping with physical gifts at that time because their kingdom program had ceased and they were now destitute having sold everything as commanded by Jesus. Luke 12 verses 32 to 33 Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have and give alms, provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. Luke 14 verses 26 to 33 If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Luke 18 verse 22 Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Romans 15 verse 28 When therefore I have performed this, and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. Seal to them this fruit, Paul bringing the offering from the Gentile regions to the suffering kingdom saints in Jerusalem. Verse 26. Romans 15 verses 29 to 31 And I am sure that, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. The fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. He wants to establish them fully in the gospel that was given to him by the risen Christ. Romans 16 verses 25 to 26. Them that do not believe in Judea, he knew that danger awaited him in Jerusalem by his former associates, who viewed him as a traitor to Judaism now. That my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints, some kingdom saints in Jerusalem still did not trust Paul who previously persecuted the kingdom church in Jerusalem. 
Acts 9 verses 1 to 2. The brethren and saints received Paul and his companions with their financial gift gladly according to Acts 21 verse 17. Paul would be arrested the very next day. Romans 15 verses 32 to 33 that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may with you be refreshed. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Instead, Paul arrived in chains after spending two years in jail in Caesarea, then finally arriving in Rome where he spent the next two years in house arrest in his own hired house. Acts 21 to 28. Now the God of peace be with you all. It seems that Paul is ending his letter, but more is to follow. Paul now will mention all his friends and the churches that have started in Rome. Chapter 16. The Revelation of the Mystery. Romans 16 verses 1 to 2 I commend unto you Phoebe our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at Sencria, that ye receive her in the Lord, as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a succor of many, and of myself also. Phoebe our sister, Phoebe is later mentioned in verse 27. The church which is at Sencria, Acts 18 verse 18. She hath been a succorer of many, and helper. Romans 16 verses 3 to 5 Greet Priscilla and Aquila my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus, who is the firstfruits of Achaia unto Christ. Priscilla and Aquila, Paul first met Priscilla and Aquila in Corinth as they fled from Rome after Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Acts 18 verses 2 and 18, 26 and 1 Corinthians 16 verse 19. Paul lived with them and worked with them for they were tent makers as well. It is evident that Paul taught this Jewish family his gospel and they received it very quickly. Laid down their own necks, they literally laid down their lives for the apostle. This could have occurred in Ephesus. Acts 19 and 20. Paul was so grateful to them for saving his life, he no doubt told all the churches of the Gentiles of their heroics because they all wished to thank them for delivering the apostle to the Gentiles from those who would destroy him. They apparently accompanied Phoebe on this journey to Rome as Paul would not send just one lady traveling alone on this long and treacherous journey, nor would he risk losing this epistle that God had given him by divine revelation. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus, who is the firstfruits of Achaia unto Christ. Epinetus, who is the firstfruits of Achaia. Achaia is a province in Asia where Paul went to preach the gospel. Epinetus was Paul's first convert there. He held a special place in Paul's memory as is witnessed by Paul calling him his well-beloved. Romans 16 verses 6 to 7 greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Unia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. This was most likely John Mark's mother, who was named Mary as she is the only Mary mentioned after Saul gets saved. Paul says she ministered to us, his team, not to him alone. Barnabas and John Mark were a part of his team. Acts 12 verse 12 And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Colossians 4 verse 10 Aristarchus my fellow prisoner saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. Mary was with Paul when Colossians was written after Paul had arrived in Rome in Acts 28. Who also were in Christ before me, Andronicus and Unia were in Christ before Paul, but they were not in the body of Christ, which is a different thing. The Jewish kingdom disciples that remained in Israel with the twelve apostles were abiding in Christ, the vine. John 15 verses 1 to 5. The twelve apostles continued on in Israel preaching the gospel of the circumcision, a kingdom message. Paul took the gospel of the uncircumcision, grace, to the whole world. Galatians 2 verse 19. We are in Christ today because we are in the body of Christ. Colossians 1 verse 24. 
who were of note among the apostles, which means they were saved under the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom message and no doubt ministered with the twelve early on before going to Rome. There were for a while two programs operating at the same time until Israel's blinding at the end of the book of Acts. It is evident that they now knew the gospel of the grace of God which Paul preached for had they not known at Aquila, and Priscilla would have soon remedied that as they did with Apollos. According to 1 Timothy 1 verse 15 and 16, Paul was the first person in the body of Christ. Which makes sense if there were two programs going on at the same time until Israel's rejection. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ. Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief, howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ may show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul was the leader, chief, of the rebellion against God and his messianic church he was building in Israel and God in his great mercy reached down and saved his archenemy and made him the apostle of the Gentiles. Not long after Paul's salvation experience in Acts chapter 9 did the ministry to the Gentiles begin. The twelve apostles to the nation of Israel however stayed and ministered to the Jews with only a few exceptions like when Peter in Acts 10 had his vision to go to the house of a Gentile. God let the twelve apostles to Israel know that something new was taking place with the saving of Saul of Tarsus and making him the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 Romans 16 verses 8 to 13 Greet amply as my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Statues, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodion, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Trophina and Trophosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. This could very well be the Rufus mentioned in the Gospel of Mark 15 verse 41 who was the son of Simon who carried Christ's cross, but we can't be sure. Romans 16 verse 14 Salute Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Here we have another church, which had at least five people in it that Paul knew personally, no doubt there were many more Paul hadn't met because the world was being turned upside down with the gospel. Romans 16 verses 15 to 16 salute Philologus, and Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Salute one another with an holy kiss. This was, and still is a practice in the Middle East and in some other countries. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 20 All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with an holy kiss. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 12 Greet one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Paul calls these assemblies the churches of Christ, and not the church of Christ, or the church of God, both of which are singular. Each church was a local independent church with Christ as its head. Romans 16 verses 17 to 18 Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. We are to publicly identify those who cause division that speak contrary to the doctrine given to us by the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy 1 verse 13 Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2 And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Romans 16 verse 19 For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, and simple concerning evil. I would have you wise unto that which is good, 
God offers us today the manifold wisdom of God and the mysteries revealed to the Apostle Paul concerning this dispensation. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7 to 8 But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And simple concerning evil, we are not to be ignorant to Satan's devices, but we are not to spend our time the studying all the doctrines of devils, but rather the doctrines of Christ. Psalm 19 verse 7 The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Psalm 119 verse 130 The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11 Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Romans 16 verse 20 And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The God of peace, Romans 15 verse 33 Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Philippians 4 verse 9 Those things, which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13 verse 20 Now the God of peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Bruise Satan under your feet shortly. To bruise here means to humble, humiliate, an enemy in defeat. It is the seed of the woman Jesus Christ who bruises Satan's head under his heel, not our feet, but we in the church are a part of Christ's body. Genesis 3 verse 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Romans 16 verses 21 to 24, Timothy is my work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus the chamberlain of the city saluteth you, and Cordus a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Tertius, who wrote this epistle, Tertius is the actual penman of the book of Romans, while it is Paul who told Tertius what God wanted written down. Gaius mine host, Paul was staying with Gaius in his home in Corinth writing this epistle. Erastus the chamberlain of the city saluteth you. 2 Timothy 4 verse 20 also tells us that Erastus was abode at Corinth, so all the evidence points to this epistle being written from Corinth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The book sounds like it is coming to an end here, but it isn't. Paul gives us another nugget to chew on that many in the body of Christ know very little about unfortunately, and the liberals all love to cast doubt about whether this portion of scripture even belongs in the book of Romans. The oldest trick in the book is causing people to doubt God's word, like Satan did to Eve. Genesis 3 verses 1 to 7 Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. 
Romans 16 verse 25 now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Him that is of power to establish you, this is speaking about the risen and ascended Christ who gave Paul this revelation from heaven. According to my gospel, believers in the age of grace are established according to Paul's gospel, which is the gospel that was revealed unto Paul by revelation. The gospel that was revealed unto Paul is for Jew and Gentile alike, and it is found best described in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. And the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, the message that Paul preached was not revealed to his prophets which was kept secret since the world began, this message was a mystery up to and during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ because the gospel of the kingdom was being preached then and it was for the Jew only. Matthew 4 verses 17 to 23 from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7 to 8, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden. Wisdom, which God ordained before the world which none of the princes of the world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Romans 16 verse 26 But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. But now is made manifest, what Paul preached was kept secret since the world began. It was made manifest to the world by Paul after he had received it by revelation from the ascended Christ is not in question here, although almost all in the body of Christ are totally ignorant of this truth. And by the scriptures of the prophets, since the gospel that Paul preached was previously a mystery hidden from them, they did not understand its truths. Romans 1 verse 2, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Remember first of all that verse 25 ends with a comma not a period. The beginning of verse 26 completes the thought in verse 25. The scriptures of the prophets made known that one day things would be uttered that have been kept secret since the foundation of the earth, but they did not elaborate what those things were because they themselves did not know. Made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, they did know, however, that they would one day be made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Romans 1 verse 5 By whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations, for his name. Romans 16 verse 27 To God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Written to the Romans from Corinthus and sent by Phoebe servant of the church at Sencria. The End Thank <music> you.